What's up guys, Adam Saxon, AKA Guy in a Cube. I hope you're having a great week. I've had a great week with all of the updates that came out. So let's dig in and take a look. First up is a blog post from Matt Allington where he looks at what he calls two great new features in Power BI. The first one's actually an updated visual and that's for the matrix visual. And it was a big update for this visual. So now it supports collapsing, expanding, filtering, you can do staggered columns. There's a lot of great stuff with this visual. So if you haven't checked it out yet, be sure to look at it. It's gonna be part of the new Power BI desktop update, which we're gonna talk about in a little bit. But if you're not using it, check it out. You have to turn on the preview feature in order to use this. So make sure that's turned on. Matt talks about that. And then you can go ahead and take a look at it. There's actually gonna be two visuals in the pane that you can choose from, the old one and the new one. So be sure to check it out, give any feedback that you may find on it, and I hope you like it. The second item he talks about is the new report theming preview. And so what this does, it allows you to define a color scheme in a JSON file and then load that into Power BI Desktop, and then you'll have a matching color grade scale in your color picker. So that way you're not stuck with the default colors that come with Power BI Desktop. There's also been a couple of people that have talked about some tools to help you build that JSON file. So I'll have that link down in the description below that you can go check out. <laughs> Lars Schreiber had a blog post where he looked at how to turn Notepad++ into a Power Query editor. So if you're using M syntax, which is the syntax used for M query or for Power Query queries, uses the M syntax with the M engine, and you want an editor to help you figure out what you're doing function-wise and to just help you build and craft that query, then take a look at this blog post. He walks through how to set this up in Notepad++ and define the engine syntax or the language syntax for color highlighting of functions and other items. So he walks you through this. He talks. He has a list of all the functions that you can just copy and paste in, and he really walks through the different steps that you need to be aware of to get this to work properly for you. So this is great if you're using M queries, you're handwriting them, or you want to edit them, and you want a little help with doing that. So be sure to check out this blog post and give Lars some feedback. I'm sure he'd appreciate it. There was an on-premises data gateway update this last month, and what it really walked through were some UI and setting changes inside of the gateway panel when you go to set this up or the, the configurator screen. And this allows you to do certain things to really help you gauge is the gateway working properly or to adjust settings to actually get it to work in your environment. An example of this is it will actually check your network connectivity. So it'll let you know, can I get out to the Azure service bus, which is what it connects to. And if it can't, it will let you know. That's very helpful when you're encountering some errors and you're not really sure why, you can at least check that, hey, am I actually making it out of my network? And if you're not, we've got some documentation on how to configure your proxy settings or what you need to do in case of a firewall issue for outbound communication. Another item along with network connectivity is to force Azure Service Bus communication over HTTPS, and this will also force it to use fully qualified domain names instead of the IP addresses. So if you've been battling with updating the IP addresses for your firewall, this will help you get around that. There was also updates in here for changing the service account that you're using for the gateway itself. We had documented steps in terms of how to do this manually. There were a couple things that you had to do. Now you can do it within the GUI for the configurator for the gateway, and it will take care of everything for you. And also there's some diagnostic items where you can configure logging. So you can turn on verbose logging directly in this GUI as well. Before it was a configuration file that you had to go change, but now you can change it within the GUI. Also, if you're using the gateway to connect to an Oracle data source where Kerberos is required, Dima asks for volunteers to help them test some things. So if you are using that in your environment and you'd like to help out, Dima's asking that you add a comment to this blog post and they will reach out to you. There were some updates for the admin portal inside of Power BI, specifically around tenant settings. So before with tenant settings, you were only able to update these for the entire tenant itself. So things were either on for everyone or they were off for everyone. Now we've introduced the ability to set granularity on these settings. So you can actually specify a security group that this applies to or excludes from. So there's a lot of different configurations that you can do here. You can read the blog post. We've also updated the official documentation for the admin portal to include what these settings are. So we also, there's a few settings that are still tenant wide 
Those are called out in the documentation out on powerbi.com. So be sure to check that out and check out how you can use these features in your environment if you are an admin for Power BI. There was another desktop update and there were a bunch of items in here as usual. From a report view perspective, we already talked about two of those. That is the updated matrix visualization and the ability to do report theming for your colors. Some other items was a numeric range slicer as well as cross highlighting across series. On the analytics side, clustering is now generally available. On the data connectivity side, we have the Azure Data Lake store is now generally available for from a data source perspective. So when you go to connect to that, also Azure Analysis Services has been added. There were a few other updates, so be sure to check the blog post for everything that came out in this month's Power BI Desktop, and be sure to update to the latest version. Okay, what was your favorite item? Was it the matrix visual? Be sure to leave that down in the comments below. And as always, the links for everything I talked about, along with some bonus links, are down in the description as well. If you like the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if it's your first time here, be sure to hit that subscribe button for more great content from both Patrick and myself. And as always, thank you so much for watching and keep being awesome.